Brad Garlinghouse, the CEO of Ripple, for a first on CNBC interview. Uh, Brad, welcome. Good to have you with us. And this is an interesting story. I'm going to pick up where, where Kate just left off, which was the idea that investors may have thought that in buying XRP, they were buying a security that gave them shares or some ownership in Ripple. Why is that wrong on its face? Well, first of all, Tyler, thanks for having me. I think this is an important issue. And I think there has been confusion out there. Ripple, the company, as Kate introduced, we have shareholders. We've raised capital from venture capitalists, from actually institutions, and even banks like Standard Charter is a shareholder. XRP is a separate thing altogether. It is a currency that trades in the marketplace. In the last eight years, over a trillion dollars of the currency has traded. And so what we find is you know, the SEC, in my opinion, having watched this for many, many years, uh, taking a position now that it is, frankly, I think, uh, with one foot out the door, a little bit incredible to kind of take the position after eight years. There are a variety of cryptocurrencies, including XRP and obviously Bitcoin and, and others. Why do you think the SEC has, is it something in the structure uh, of your business uh, that makes the SEC concerned that there may be a securities violation uh, of some sort in here. What's different about the way you are structured that would cause them to, to, to potentially file a suit? Well, it, about two and a half years ago, a little over two and a half years ago, the SEC came out proactively and said they did not view Bitcoin as a security. They viewed it as a commodity or currency. Shortly thereafter, they came out and said Ether, the second most valuable cryptocurrency, is also not a, uh, a security. They then have spent the last two and a half years going after uh, kind of enforcement by saying that certain initial coin offerings were securities offerings. Actually, I've spoken out in favor of that because I think in many cases those were, in fact. XRP, however, is almost undistinguishable from the, what is Ether in terms of its decentralization, in terms of the breadth of activity. It's traded on a couple hundred exchanges around the world. And what's amazing to me is not a single other country anywhere has looked at XRP as a security. You've had countries like the UK and Japan and Switzerland and Singapore all come out and say things that are make it clear that XRP is a currency. Uh, actually, one other nugget I think is hey, interesting Brad. is even, sorry, even here in the US, the Department of Justice has viewed XRP as a currency and uh, the Department of Treasury has viewed XRP as a currency. Sorry, Kate. That's right, Brad. Kate here. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. I want to ask you, you mentioned um, some of those exchanges. I want to ask you about the broader implications for others in the industry. Coinbase is a big name we talk about a lot. They see about 12 percent of their trading volume in XRP. That company is about to IPO. What would this mean to some of the global exchanges that hold XRP or facilitate trading of XRP on those exchanges? So about 95% of XRP trading happens outside the United States on exchanges around the world. And so that's outside of the United States SEC jurisdiction. For exchanges like Coinbase that are based here in the United States, one of the reasons why I view this as something that's broader than just, hey, what does this mean for Ripple and XRP? It's what does this mean for the crypto industry here in the United States? The SEC is really picking winners. They're saying there's a duopoly of Bitcoin and Ether are the two digital assets, the cryptocurrencies that will be not regulated by the SEC here in the United States. And it really, I think, sends a, an ominous sign for innovation around cryptocurrency in the United States. Picking winners in general has not been something the U.S. government should be in the business of doing. What will happen... And you mentioned before that... X go ahead, go ahead oh, Kate. Oh, sorry, Tyler. No, please, Kate. <laughs> no, that XRP could really go on without Ripple. You know, if you guys sold all of your holdings of XRP, that cryptocurrency could survive would you ever consider doing that, divesting all of your cryptocurrency holdings and really focus more on your enterprise payments business? Is that something that Ripple has considered or could do? It's certainly, I think, one of the ironies of all of this is that for XRP to be a security of a company, the company has to exist. And the point that I have made at various times is that if Ripple, the company, didn't exist, XRP would still thrive around the globe with you know, a couple hundred exchanges around the world. And there's over 100 different projects, innovative entrepreneurs here in the U.S. and around the world building on top of XRP. And the reason why they're doing that is because XRP is far more efficient in terms of speed, in terms of cost, to settling transactions and using it really as a currency. The power consumption has been widely reported 
a, a Bitcoin transaction is dramatically different and, you know, costs a lot more. All right, folks, we've got to leave it there. Brad Garlinghouse, thank you for your time today. I'm sure this will be one we'll be following up on. And Kate Rooney, thank you as well. Rahel, thank you both. You bet. All right, Tyler.